of a brand new enclosure build that I did for my friend Phoenix the corn snake. I'm gonna go through step by step how I did it, how I installed everything, and I hope you enjoy it. The theme for this enclosure is basically a mid-Atlantic state house's garden, if that makes any sense at all. Um, essentially, oh, <laughs> Over the years, we have definitely encroached onto the corn snake's natural habitat, so our homes have kind of become their natural habitat. So what I'm doing is trying to make like the foundation of a house where you might find a corn snake in your backyard. If you enjoy this video, I'd love to hear exactly what you like, so drop a comment below to let me know. Like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and make sure you hit that notification bell so you can be notified for more videos like this. I really hope you enjoy it, so let's get right into it. So here we have Phoenix's old enclosure. It is a PVC 4x2x2 original Zen Habitat enclosure. It is totally sufficient for housing a corn snake. We have lots of live plants, some great substrate, some areas to hide, but I really want to give her more, so places to climb, etc. All right, so now, like other videos I've done in the past, we have a mock-up of the enclosure that I want to build. I don't know if you've ever seen corn snakes climb up brick walls, but it is fascinating to watch. So I want to basically install a brick wall for Phoenix to climb on. So that's gonna be the first step. Then we'll put in our substrate. We're gonna use some nice cypress mulch for good humidity, some live leaf litter. Um, then just to make it look more like a house, I'm gonna add a little spigot for a water hose and a water hose that will be non-functional, but it will serve as an additional hiding spot for her. After that, we're gonna put in some live plants. I have a big, beautiful Boston fern and some polka dot begonias. We'll throw in a branch for climbing purposes and I wanna give her something that's a little bit different for a water bowl, like to kinda of go with the aesthetic. So I'm gonna take a galvanized steel bucket and that will be her water bowl. So for Phoenix's build, we're going to use a four x two x two PVC Meridian Zen Habitat enclosure. So the first step, because I want to paint the panels, I need to sand them a little bit just to scuff it up so the paint can stick. I cleaned off any remaining dust from sanding and now I'm going to tape off the frame so that I don't make a mess and get paint all over the beautiful frame. <laughs> So for the background of the back panel, I wanted to create kind of a mortar color since I'm not using actual brick mortar. So what I'm using is Flex Seal paint. I guess I could have had it tinted at the hardware store, but I wanted to try to do it myself more economically. So I am using water-based food coloring to tint it. And I think I came up with a pretty good color that looks like mortar. I did the same thing to the side panels, but with a green paint because I wanted them to look kind of like faux bushes in the background. Obviously, food coloring isn't typically used to tint paint, but stick around and see how well it holds up later on in the video. The next thing I needed to figure out is how to lay out my brick veneer. So these are not full-size bricks, they're actually just like brick slices that um, people can use to like make a fireplace facade, etc. I had X amount number of bricks and I needed to figure out how to evenly space them out so that I have nice gaps for Phoenix to climb through. So lots of math, trying to figure out the best way to lay this out. So I made a quick digital rendition so I could check my spacing against it. The next thing that I had to do was actually trace out the lines so I could use it as a guide to make sure that my bricks were nice and straight. Before I glue them down, I laid them all out to make sure again that they fit. So this is like the fifth time I checked that everything is going to fit properly. For the sides, it's actually very simple to cut these bricks. All you have to do is pretty much snap them in half with a hammer. And then I took some Gorilla Glue construction adhesive and put some on the back of the bricks and adhered it right to the enclosure itself. 
I wasn't originally intending to put bricks on the green side because I wanted that to look more like plant-like, but since I had leftover bricks and I ran out of the mortar color paint, I decided to glue on little fake vines in between the bricks to try to mask that green line between the bricks. I also used the Gorilla Glue construction adhesive to adhere my fake spigot and the holder for my hose. Meanwhile, while my bricks are drying, I decided to work on Phoenix's new water bowl. It is this really cool galvanized stainless steel pail that is actually food safe. But just for good measure, because sometimes galvanized steel can leach out zinc, I'm going to seal it. So the inside I sealed with Flex Seal, um, the clear variety, and then the outside I'm using some Krylon clear spray. The great thing about these Meridian closures is they are collapsible. So. Um, the only thing that happened here is the bricks made it super duper heavy, so I kind of struggled to get it into the right position. But once I got it in position, super duper easy to put together. You just flip the bottom out, flip the top on, and then pop the sides on. The Meridian enclosures are held together by eight screws, so that's what I'm doing right here. Okay, back to mixing more paint. I really wanted to paint a faux bush on this side of the panel just for the aesthetic. Um, so I mixed together multiple shades of green with my food coloring. Again, this is the Flex Seal paint, which is food safe and reptile safe as long as it is the paint on version versus the spray on version. I am not an artist by any means, and I tried really hard to make this bush using brush strokes. I absolutely hated it, so you'll see that I just squashed it and hated it, and it's fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> For good measure, I did another layer of Flex Seal on the inside of my bowl. After that, it was time to make my little hose hide. So I'm using a ton of silicone on this. I siliconed the ends of the hose so Phoenix can't accidentally climb in there and then I'll never find her and I'd be so sad. I basically kind of taped it all together so that it was in shape and then siliconed around it to hold it into place. I'm using some more silicone to adhere the rest of my vines on the background. Another note about silicone is that it needs to be 100% silicone with no mold or mildew preventative additives. Those things can be very toxic to our reptiles. So once everything is adhered with my silicone, which can be pretty stinky, we want it to air out and cure over time. So I let this sit for a couple weeks before I moved it into our reptile room. Next, I had the guys move it into the reptile room. I know it's not done, but I'm so excited. Look how amazing it looks already. It fits so well. Okay, so we got it into place, and now it is time for me to start adding my substrates. Oh my god, look how satisfying it is to watch this coconut core grow. If you've never used compressed coconut core bricks, they're so fun to use. You basically mix them with hot water and they expand and turn into a nice fibrous coconut substrate. So I'm gonna be using that with a mixture of cypress malt. So I'll put that in, I'll mist it, and then smush it all up, get it all mixed nice and even, and then I will throw down a layer of live leaf litter. Like I had mentioned earlier, I want this hose to basically be um, an extra hide for Phoenix. So I'm taking some moistened sphagnum moss and I'm stuffing it into the crevices of the hose so that way it's nice and soft for her to get in there and burrow into. Next is my favorite part, the live plants. Oh my god, they're so beautiful. So I have this beautiful little polka dot begonia and there's a massive Boston fern. I can't wait for Phoenix to explore it. The next thing I needed to do was to put in my technical stuff. So I am connecting my Mist King to it. I'm using a halogen basking bulb, an LED plant bar, and a 36 inch UVB bulb. Before we introduce our snake, we obviously need to pop these doors on. The last thing I am doing is grabbing some of the supplies, or decor rather, from Phoenix's old enclosure. I'm doing this because it's things that I want to reuse, as well as providing her items that she's familiar with the scent of, so acclimating hopefully will go much smoother in her new enclosure. 
Okay, let's introduce Phoenix to her brand new home. I am so thrilled with the way it came out. I hope she enjoys it. She's got tons of places to climb and hide and explore. I think this is going to be a really great home for her. There we go, little lady. Oh, you can go that way, I guess. as Phoenix enjoys her new house. I really think that she is thriving in it. She's got tons of cool places to hide and she has just really been exploring and it makes me so happy. Make sure to drop me a comment to let me know what you liked specifically about this build. Also, like this video, subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell. We'll have lots of videos like this coming up. Thanks for watching. <laughs>